You're beautiful. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> you look like a goddess. This light, this outfit, this hair. <laughs> Y'all are, I had to come correct for the queens. Okay. Ooh, Hello. Thank you. <laughs> Yes. Hi, ladies. How are you? Doing well. How are you? Good. Y'all look bomb, as I stated before. Thank you. I'm so, Thank you. I'm so excited to talk to you both. Dominique, I'll start with you. Um, in Swarm, you play Dre, this crazed, obsessed super stand of a Beyonce-like pop star. But what I was impressed about most, like, you kill it in everything you do, obviously. Thank you. But co-creator and executive producer Janine Neighbor said that you received a three-minute standing ovation on the last day of filming. Um, and I just have to know, I'm not surprised at that. <laughs> Me and I just to from you, what was it about this story, fan culture in particular, and the story of Dre that attracted you when you wanted to tell this story? Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, it wasn't really about fan culture that made me want to do it. I think that was just the vehicle um, for a story, right? Like, you know, we, we're, we're, look, we're always looking for original ideas and we, and Donald and Janine took something that we all know from our society and just put, um, put, that was the circumstance, but it's not the heart, it's not the heart of the piece. And so I didn't think about it, oh, I'm going to do this obsessed fan. It was more so of being like, I'm, I'm so used to being characters that are easy to love and easy to like, and I just want to give my own chance and my own artistry the opportunity to explore what I could really do, um, playing a character that's so different from anything I've ever done. And, you know, I've, I love Monster, Charlize Theron, and uh, Boys Don't Cry with Hilary Swank, or, or Heath Ledger as a Joker, and mm -hmm. we don't often get those times to play characters like this, and, mm -hmm. and it was an opportunity that I didn't wanna, that I didn't wanna pass up, and I had to move out of my own way, out of my own fears, and I knew that if, I felt as though if I didn't do it now, I might later become imprisoned by my own fears, and my own artistry, in that I know people are used to seeing me this way, if I get so comfortable there and then I become afraid to shake things up or to let them see another side for fear of how they're going to feel about me, then I won't be doing my art a service or anybody else or the gift that God gave me. He gave me here to, he put me here to be an artist. Listen, you just dropped a word. You preached and gave us a word. Listen, y'all can <laughs> Because we are used to seeing you in those roles that are lovable and that are strong and nuanced, but we've never yeah. seen you like this. And again, you delivered. Thank uh, you. Chloe, first of all, congratulations on the solo tour. Yeah. Can't wait. Yeah. So excited about that. Thank you. Um, me too. <laughs> yes, I cannot wait. I can't wait for the looks, everything. Mm. Um, you play Marissa, a budding makeup artist who's also a fan of this pop star. But as we all know, in real life, you are the real pop star. You did the thing. You are doing the thing. I'm trying. <laughs> yes. What has your own experience been like navigating your personal life with your life as a pop star? And have you ever felt like fans have too much access? Have you ever had any concerns about that at all, about fans being overly obsessed with you? No. Uh, if you know, I th I think I still have imposter syndrome <laughs> because anytime someone even stops me on the street and they're like, "Hi, can I take a picture with you?" I'm like, "Me? You want to take a picture with me?" So honestly, I'm still grasping, grasping even the thought and idea that I have such amazing supporters and fans that support me and recognize me and they see me. So you know. I'm grateful for that because without them, my sister and I, we were founded on YouTube because of these people sharing and supporting mm -hmm. us and buying the record and mm -hmm. listening to our albums during the pandemic and, and getting us through it together. So in a way, it feels like a family. Mm. And the, the only time any negative comments affect me, it, it's not from the fans. You know, the fans are what keep me going. And, and it, because music is therapy for me, and I will constantly create and, and be like Albert Einstein with my computer and beats in my bedroom. I'll always do that. But when I see messages from fans and, and, and people a, a part of these support groups for me, which is even still crazy to say, it reminds me that as... Dom was saying, the gift that we were given, 
I'm not just supposed to create this music to heal myself. Music is a healer, and it, it's because of them that it keeps me going because I'd be doing a disservice to God and the reason why I'm here by not sharing music that has not only pulled me out of the dumps, but even if it just helps one person, I'm doing my job. So when it came to this project, that's not where my mind was at all because my part of this show was to represent all of the people who are too scared to say that they need help mm -hmm. and all of the people who seem strong on the outside but inside they're the weakest of them all and mm -hmm. that that was Marissa's part and I found so much of myself within that and I think that's why it was so easy to let go and so easy to get myself there but not only that I had the best scene partner who I felt comfortable to do that with and the crazy thing is we've we only hung out like twice before we started shooting but instantly from the first take of the first scene you felt the synergy and you felt the love and the sisterhood and the bond and and that's like the light in this dark tunnel of a show here is the bus. Oh, yeah. Where is the bus? You said we used to be a shame. Oh, 